Dear friends, in this video I would like to prove the Möbius inversion formula. Recall that uh, this formula deals with arithmetic functions, which means that we have a function f defined on positive integers and function g defined as the sum of values of function f taken at divisors of n. So n is an arbitrary positive integer and we take all its divisors, uh, take values of f at these divisors and sum them all to gain g of n. In this case, in this case, the Möbius inversion formula states that f of n is equal to, well, something similar, only with special multiplier, which uses the Möbius function. So this uh, theorem allows us to gain function f if we know only function g. Let's prove it. <coughs> well, this would be, this will be um, rather long, but essentially simple proof. Just take this formula, this sum of mu of n over d multiplied by g of d and prove that it is indeed equal to f of n. First, I'll just rewrite this expression. And then substitute g of d uh, using the original formula. So we know that g of d, just one second, I need to write all the other parts. And we, now, we know that g of d uh, is equal to sum over all divisors of d of f of k. And now just transform this sum of sums into a large sum by changing the order of summation, the order of addition. Thus, this is equal to uh, sum over all divisors of n and all divisors of d. And here we have mu of n over d multiplied by f of k. And we can reorder this sum and write first f of k and then multiply this by mu n over d. Well, if we take k, if we consider k, then uh, this k will be present for many d's. Well, maybe not too much, too many d's, but several. In this case, we can write uh, this sum in another way. <clears throat> By all means, k is a divisor of n. So for all divisors of n, f of k is multiplied by sum of mu of n over d for all d such that n is divisible by d and d is divisible by k. So n and k we are fixed over here and d runs through all possible positive integers such that this condition holds. 
So now we need to do something with this sum. Notice that it does not depend on f, so it must be a predefined number. In order to realize what this sum is equal to, we should make some introduce some new variables. So let a be equal to n over k and b equal to d over k. Thus we divide both n and d by k. Uh, somehow simplify this expression. And then, in that case, it will be equal to sum mu of, well, notice that n over d is the same as a over b, taken over, well, uh, n should be divisible by d, which means that a should be divisible by b. And both of them are automatically divisible by k because we divided n and d by k. So simply the only condition is a should be divisible by b. Okay, in this form it looks more simple. But before we understand what this number is, uh, let's just notice that it's just the same as the sum of m of just b over all divisors of a. Well, this b is of course not the same b as here. It's just that in this sum we take mu of all fractions a over b, but these fractions uh, the set of these fractions is the same as the set of divisors of A because B runs through all divisors of N. Thus, actually, we have a sum of Möbius function over all divisors of A. Okay, now deal with this expression. In order to deal with this expression, let's represent A um, as a product of prime numbers, so just take prime factorization of a, say a is equal to p1 to the power alpha 1, p2 to the power alpha 2, and so on, pl to the power alpha l, where p1, p2, and so on are pairwise distinct prime numbers. And Try to calculate this sum over there. Then sum of Möbius function taken at divisor of A will be, and here we just need to think a bit. Well, we know that Möbius function is equal to zero if its argument, the number inside, uh, is divisible by any square greater than one. So, uh, on, the only non-zero summons here occur when B consists of several P's, several prime factors of A, several different prime factors of A. And in this case, Möbius function of B is equal to minus one to the power of number of these prime factors that are contained inside B. When I say contained inside B, of course, I mean the prime factorization of B. Okay, in this case, well, we know that there is exactly one divisor of A that contains all these prime numbers. It's the product of P1, P2, and so on, PL. And Möbius function in this number is equal to minus 1 to the power L. Okay, so there are divisors of A that consist of L minus 1 prime factors. But there are several such divisors exactly
this amount of such divisors. <coughs> So, and in each of these b's consisting, consisting of uh, L minus 1 p's, in each of these divisors, the value of uh, Möbius function is equal to minus 1 to the power of L minus 1. And this is, of course, binomial coefficient uh, denoted as C uh, of L and 1. Okay, so... There are divisors that contain L minus two prior factors, right? So we continue our calculations and say that we need C of L and two minus one to the power L minus two. Well, because this is the number of uh, ways, the number of possibilities, to choose uh, 2 of L, which means that we need to get rid of two prime factors in order to gain B that contains exactly L minus two prime factors. And so on. So we get this formula, which ends with such summoned. And uh, if we look at this long sum, then we might notice that it's equal to minus 1 plus 1 to the power L. But this is equal to 0. And from this we might conclude that sum of Möbius function of all, over all divisors is always equal to zero, but this would lead to a conclusion that this is always zero, but we know that it is not, it should not be so. The point is that in order for this sum to be equal to zero, we need to have at least one prime divisor in A. Well, if there is at least one prime divisor here, then indeed this sum is equal to zero. And that's what we proved. But in case A is equal to one, then there are no prime divisors here. And in this case, the only divisors of number one is just number one. And we know that Möbius function of one is equal to one. This leads to the following conclusion. Well, if A is not equal to 1, then this expression is equal to 0. And if A is equal to 1, then this expression is equal to 1. Thus, what is this sum, this expression equal to? Well, when is this equal to 1? A should be equal to B. And this means, what is A, what is B? Oh, this means that N should be equal to D. So, if N is equal to D, uh, we can see that this sum, yes, we can see that this sum will be equal to, well, will be equal to f of n. So this finishes the proof that uh, the right-hand side of Möbius inversion formula indeed gives us f of n.